My name's Hayward Taylor, I'm 36 and I'm currently living in Newcastle. The first time I was diagnosed with ADHD was when I was six years old. Looking back, I definitely realised that ADHD had a significant impact on my day-to-day -day life. It, um, it would be difficult for me to get motivated to do things that I wanted to do if I had a project or say for example homework if we're going right back. There would be like a mental block, I wouldn't be able to do these things. And then in relationships I would often find myself getting upset very quickly. Um, it would seem that there was no space between my triggers and my thoughts and my reaction. And so I was just very impulsive with everything that I did. I feel with ADHD, there's a lot of self-loathing that gets involved because we're perceived as something that we're not. Um, and you, you portray something, <laughs> you portray a character of yourself, which isn't really you, you're, you're just reacting. Um, which can become quite confusing and um, disheartening, really. You end up uh, losing a lot of self-confidence about yourself because you don't have control over who you are. That's how it often feels. I was born with a port wine stain birthmark, which is quite literally just blood vessels very close to the surface of the skin. It started off very light pink when I was young, and as I got older, it darkened in colour um, and became a bit lumpy with age. Not only did I contend with my ADHD causing this anxiety, but also having the birthmark caused its own hurdles for me when it came to anxiety. I would often get quite anxious walking down the street because I knew that people would look at me, they'd see the birthmark, they would look away quickly if I spotted them looking, that would make me feel uncomfortable, that would make me feel insecure about myself. But then I found alcohol and that helped me contend with that social anxiety. And then later on I discovered getting tattooed. Started getting more and more tattooed and I realized the more tattooed I was getting, the more confident I was feeling, until it got to a point where I was getting my hands and neck tattooed. And then I realized that I was getting stared at more, but suddenly they weren't just staring at me because of my birthmark, they were staring at me because of the tattoos, and so I'd kind of reclaimed the stares. I was owning it, essentially. The biggest change I've ever made in my life was finally being able to quit alcohol. I started drinking alcohol when I was 14, really as an escape to get away from this internal chaos that I was going through. This, um, my anxiety was getting worse by this age. and. I always remember as being a kid I enjoyed being hyperactive but this was this carefree kind of being was leaving me and so when I discovered alcohol I could then feel free again. Um, there wasn't so much of a mental battlefield going on, the, the overthinking wasn't there, I could just drink and be silly and be free from it all. I mean I also had other struggles with myself at the time because I felt very alienated and bland physically having my birthmark especially I always knew that I stood out from the crowd but at that point it was never in a good way it was a, a negative connotation that I had with that and so when I drank I could really just get rid of all those feelings and thoughts The problem was the negative effects of the alcohol itself was increasing my anxiety. My hangovers were lasting for days and I would feel even more isolated and insecure um, after drinking. But I was kind of torn because if I wasn't drinking I wouldn't be socialising. But the drinking was making me feel worse. So I was in this nightmarish spiral of 
having to drink to have a social existence, or what I thought was a social existence, and to, um, and to look after my mental health. And it would be later on in my 20s and early 30s that the alcohol would really have a, a strong impact on my um, well-being. I needed to drink in order to be able to talk to people. I needed to drink at one point to even be able to leave the house. Once I came to the realization that actually I had a lot of unresolved toxic issues, that's when I could just start investigating and unpacking a lot of my past traumas. I realized that a lot of it comes from a place of fear, a lot of it came from a place of insecurity, and a lot of my issues that I had with other people had nothing to do with them. It, it came from a place of a lack of self-worth, and really realizing that alone kind of helps alleviate a little bit of the problem. But I remember I would, I would write down lists and lists of things that I didn't like about myself and things that, issues that I was struggling with, with other people. And when I looked at all these issues, I always realized that it came back to me. It was always a me problem. It wasn't a them problem. And that, so I had to shift my focus a little bit. It wasn't the world against me. It was, it was just me within me. That's where I had to focus my attention and my effort. And the more I did that, the more confident with myself I felt. And even though being sober for an extended amount of time became quite isolating and lonely, I, I needed that to be able to be in a place where I found enough self-confidence to then move forwards with potential relationships, new friendships, and things that I wanted to do with my life. I've come to a place now where I feel a lot more positive and a lot more open than I used to be. One element that I still struggle with is self-sabotaging thoughts sometimes. I will often resort back to old thought patterns and potentially talk myself out of doing something that I want to do, whether it's a project or meet a friend or go halfway across the country to do a project. I, I will, I will self-sabotage and say, oh, but you're not good enough. What are you doing? You're out of your depth. But I recognize them now. Whereas before I would react to them by putting my hands up and going, well, I can't, I can't do it then. I'm not gonna do it. I don't wanna risk embarrassing myself or shaming myself, look like an idiot. Now I, I've tried to change my perception of these things and see them more as a, look at them more as a opportunity to, to grow and to, face those thoughts <laughs> head on, really. But I, I do still struggle with, with that. I think it's absolutely vital to be compassionate and patient and kind to ourselves um, for a host of reasons, but especially for a, a healthier internal dialogue and ecosystem. And, once you can be in a place where you're forgiving of how you feel and how you are with yourself, then you have the opportunity to do that with everybody else. I feel it's important to share my story because I truly believe that sharing experiences and personal journeys can help and help other people. Not everyone is gonna resonate with everybody's shared experience, but if it helps just one person, it, it really is all worthwhile. And I think it also, um, it shows other people that it's okay to share your experiences even if they are difficult or if you've been through a tricky journey. My name is Hayward Taylor and this is my voice.